welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass channel and I'm now answering a question <clears throat> number seven from the Solomon GP3 all C3 collection and this is question number 13 from my P3 end of topic worksheet number two which is about graphs and functions functions and graphs and here we have a question where we are given this sketch of this function y equals f of x and we can see where it meets the coordinate axes at the points a, 0, and 0, b. A, a and b are constants. Showing in terms of a and b the coordinates of any points of intersection with axes. Sketch on separate diagrams the graph of y equals the inverse of f of x and y equals 2 times f3 of x. So first of all, I'll start with um, the first one, which is y equals inverse of f of x. So you have y equals the inverse of the function f of x. Now the inverse of a function is its reflection in the y x in the in the in the line y equals x. Sorry, okay, in the line y equals x. Okay, that's the inverse of a function. So to to draw the inverse of this, you have to reflect it in the line y equals x, which is this line over here. So basically, what happens is the y um, the 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 x and y coordinates swap over okay the x and y coordinates swap over so this a0 is now going to this is this is going to be on the negative side this a is a negative value you can see it's on the negative side so this a0 let me just extend this line to make it clearer this a0 is now going to be down here somewhere okay reflected in the line y equals x so it's going to be 0a now a is a negative value of course because it's on the negative side of the x-axis Okay, so that's that's zero a, and the point zero b is going to be now the point b zero. It's going to be like this, so it's going to go through these two points, all right, and this point is also going to be reflected in the in the uh, line y equals x. So it's going to be down here somewhere. It's going to be somewhere over here, and it's basically going to go something like this. It's going to go through there. Oops, it's going to go through there, and there. And there. So it's going to have this type of shape. It's like a reflection in the line y equals x. So I've drawn it on the side here just to get an idea of how it looks. So I know it's going to go through the point BA, B0, sorry, not BA, B0, and the point um, 0A. And A is a negative value, of course. And it's going to have its like a, kind of this curved point over here. This It's like the vertex almost. It's kind of cut off over there down here somewhere. So let me just extend that a bit. So let me just write this a bit neater. So it's going to have, this is going to be B and 0, and this is going to be 0, A, and it's going to turn somewhere over here. So it's going to look something like this. Move this a bit closer so it looks better. It's going to have this kind of look to it like this. continue like that okay look something like that it's basically it's it's a it's going to be like a parabola but stopping right at the vertex there okay so that's y equals inverse of fx um it shares show any points of intersection with axes okay so that's part a done that's part a part one so that's part one done that's there and then we got to do number two two times f3x to y equals two times f3x okay so what we do in these kind of cases is uh, there's a procedure to follow which sometimes does make a difference sometimes doesn't but also always better to start with what's inside the function Okay, so if we think about the original coordinates of these two points, you have a0 and you have 0b. Okay, so the first thing that happens is you do with what's inside the function. So f3x, basically, that is a horizontal stretch of the factor of the reciprocal of the number that's multiplying in here. So this will be, you change only the um, x-coordinates, the y-coordinates don't change. And they are not multiplied by 3, but they're divided by um, 3, multiplied by a third, you could say. So this is going to become a over 3, and this is going to stay as 0. 
and this is going to become stay as zero because zero times one third is still zero, and this is not going to change because of this, because this is the y coordinate. The y coordinates remain unchanged when it, something changes what's inside the function. So this is three x inside the function only changes the x coordinates, and if it's a factor of three, you have to multiply by its reciprocal, which is one third. So it becomes a over three and zero, and this stays as zero b. Because the zero, the the x coordinate is zero, it won't change, and then you got two times f three x. So now we're going to deal with this two times. Now this affects only the y coordinates, and they change in the normal way. So this is a this is a vertical stretch of factor two. The x coordinates don't change, so this stays as a over three, and this stays as um, zero. But this is what's multiplied by two. Now in this case, that doesn't make any difference because zero times two is zero. And here, b times 2 is 2b, so that changes. So these are the final coordinates of the two points, 0b and a0. Okay, so we can then uh, write them down. So we, we know, now know that it goes through a over 3, 0, so it's going to squash this way. And 0, 2b, so it's kind of been extended down this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just extend this a bit. Okay, so it's like extended a bit down that way. So this is now... 2b okay and of course um what's going to happen here it, this this point is also going to be um similar kind of things going to happen to this point so it's gonna it, this is going to get closer and this is going to get further so it's gonna it's going to look a bit strange like this it's still going to have the same basic shape but it's going to be like something like this i'm gonna just put it back later on this 2b is let's put it up here a bit it's going to have some shape like this. It's going to kind of like a, it's like a parabola that's been stretched out a bit. That's all. Okay, so let me try and do it in a in a more. I'll draw it first, and then I'll put the values in. So it's going to have this type of shape, but it's going to be like stretched out a bit. So I'll just draw something like that, stretched out a bit. because <clears throat> that's also going to get further away from there. Something like that. Okay, so that's going to be A over 3, and that's going to be 0 and 2B. Okay, that's going to be A over 3, and that's going to be 0 and 2B. Okay, and this point, which would have been like the vertex has also moved in and got stretched. So there's the answer to part two. Okay, y equals f times two, y equals two times f three x. Okay, so there's part two. And now for part three. And now for part b, it says given that f of x equals two minus the square root of x plus nine, where x is a member of the real numbers and x must be greater than or equal to minus nine, Find the values of a and b. Now, a is the x-intercept. Okay, that's a. And the y-intercept is b. So, the x-intercept is found when y equals 0. So, if we substitute y equals 0 into here, we'll have 2 minus the square root of x plus 9 is equal to 0. If we solve this, we'll have 2 equals the square root of x plus 9. Squaring both sides, you have 4 equals x plus 9. So therefore, x is equal to 4, 4 minus 9, which is negative 5. So x equals minus 5. Okay, so that's the um, x coordinate. That's, that's, that's the point 5, 0. When y equals 0, x is 5. So I know that this is 5, 0. So I can see that the value of a is 5. So I can say, therefore, a is 5. Okay, a is equal to 5, minus 5, sorry. That's minus 5, 0, not 5. Okay, so there's your a, minus 5, 0. So a is equal to negative 5. Okay, and for b, b is the y-intercept. The y-intercept is when x equals 0. So if we take the same equation and we replace the x with 0, we have f0 is equal to 2 minus the square root of 9, okay, which is equal to 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. Okay, so that means we can say that, um, you know, the coordinates of the point of the y-intercept, 
the x the the y zipped is zero minus one okay so zero minus one is the y intercept therefore we can say b is equal to negative one so we've got the value of a and the value of b and that's question part b done okay, now for part c and we're asked to find the an expression for the inverse function of this f of x and find its domain so i've got the drawing of the original function remember this was minus five and zero and this was zero and minus one i don't think we need it in this question but anyway so here we have this function and we've got to find the inverse to find the inverse of a function first replace the fx with y so you have two minus the square root of x plus nine and then you're basically swapping the x and y axes. So you call a y x and you call x y. You just simply just change their names around. And then you make y the subject of this formula. So in order to do that, what I'll do is I will make this square root term positive by adding it to both sides. And then I have 2 minus x on this side. And then I can square both sides. So I have the square root of y plus, sorry, squaring both sides will give me y plus 9 is equal to 2 minus x all squared. Okay, and then I can just subtract 9 from both sides. So I have y is equal to 2 minus x all squared minus 9. Okay, um, this is a bit of a strange way for completing the square. I mean, it's kind of completed the square. It's a bit of a strange way of writing it because of the, um, you know, the minus front of the x squared. We could, we could sort that out quite easily, and I, I'm going to do that here because... I think it's better to have it in a familiar format. So what I can do is um, I can take um, minus 1 outside of this bracket. So this is like, it's still the whole thing is squared. I'm taking minus 1 outside of it. This gives me minus 2 plus x, which is x minus 2. Okay, and that's a minus 9. I mean, I could leave the answer like this. It's perfectly fine too, but I want to leave it in a more familiar format. So this minus 1 gets squared, so you end up with plus 1. So you end up with just x minus 2 squared minus 9. Now you might think, how come they're the same? Well, they are. If you square this, you get 4 minus 4x plus x squared. If you square this, you're going to get x squared minus 4x plus 4. It's the same thing. These two give you the same thing. It's like having a minus 3 squared and 3 squared. They give you the same thing. Okay, so this is like just a negative version of that. So you square it, you're going to get the same thing. So this is the same as saying y equals x minus 2 all squared minus 9. Okay, that looks a bit more familiar for us in terms of a quadratic when you've completed the square. And you can read off the vertex from here. It's going to be 2 and minus 9, okay, which might help us in this question anyway. Um, but let's see. So we know that um, that's the inverse function. Either this... This is fine to write your answer like this, and this is fine to write your this answer like this. But we must state the domain, even if the question didn't say and state its domain, especially as the uh, function has been restricted, you must always state the domain. So if you don't state the, main, the domain, even if the question doesn't tell you to, you will still lose marks. Okay, so it's very, very important to state the domain of these functions. All right, so now the domain of the function, of the inverse function, is going to be the same as the range of the original function. And this is the original function. And the range of the original function is from here downwards. And we can see that the value of this point here, okay, is going to be where x is, this is minus 9. This is where x is minus 9. When x is minus 9, this is where you get the limit of this, because you know this is one of those... Um, those square root functions right so the, this this cannot be less than uh, minus 9 if it's less than minus 9 then you're going to have this thing undefined so x must be greater than or equal to minus 9 as it states here so therefore we need to find the y value when x is minus 9 and obviously it's 2 because when x is minus 9 y is 2 which kind of fits into the the, the vertex of our uh, inverse function that we drew before so this is 2 okay this value is 2 here so the range of this function is y is less than or equal to 2. That means the domain of the inverse function is x is less than or equal to 2. Okay, x must be less than or equal to 2. All right, that's the um, domain of this function here. Okay, so this is the domain. You can say x is a member of all the real numbers 
and x is less than or equal to 2. And there we have the answer to question part C from this uh, end of topic worksheet question 13 and from question number, what was it, I think uh, number 7 from the Solomon G P3, P3 or C3 collection. Um, other questions you might want to watch from this particular Solomon G paper uh, as I answer them will be found in this playlist that should appear somewhere over here. Other questions from this particular worksheet, this end of topic worksheet on graphs and functions from P3 can be found in the playlist that should appear in this area. Other questions from functions and graphs from P3 in general can be found in this playlist. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link in the middle. Um, and other material you might want to look for can be found in the description under the video. Thank you for watching and see you soon.